Hi everyone, I'm going to make an art journal page today and I'm using this kind of notebook that I found in the cheap store. It seems like a sketchbook and the paper was fine with me, so <laughs> that's what I'm using. I've already gessoed my, this double spread and I really want to play with colors. I've got here purple, deep green and some kind of turquoise and magenta and I've got here gesso and I don't have a plan I just want some color on my page so I'm just starting and I'm going to dip a little bit in water because it's quite a uh, pasty so I'm trying to help it along and as I said I really don't have a plan, I just want a lot of color on my page. This, uh, most of it is going to get covered, so I'm really not concerned where everything goes. And dipping into the gesso instead of using white acrylic paint i'm using the gesso it gives me more variation to the same color so i'm just covering my page and now i'm going uh, for the greens and i'm going to switch a brush just so I won't get mud and again dipping it in a little bit of water just so I can move it and then it also won't be a, won't dry on me fast and I can still mix colors And dipping into the gesso. Now I'm trying to do me to mix between all of this. basically it's just playing around and having fun smearing paint no rhyme or reason and let's go with this because I can and a little bit of purple and now I'm taking a little bit of the green and going here As I said, I'm playing with it. So it's complete mess. And that's the beauty of it, to me at least. Yeah. Just going er over places that I think are a little bit more harsh than I would like and but basically this is it so he here is the beginning of my background I'm going to let this no but I think I will continue no it needs to dry I want to stencil on it and I don't want the stencil to stick to the page and lift color so I will have to wait for it to dry I'll be back. I'm back. So, uh, before I'm uh, stenciling, I've got some magazine cutout that I want to incorporate into my page, but I don't want it to stick like a sore thumb. Now, this is the magazine page, and I 
part of it a fussy cut it and I will uh, explain in a minute why I've done what I've done so basically this is going to go here and I fussy cut a the parrot whatever uh, this bird is uh, here because I want it to stand out and these areas areas I'm going to mix and put paint that uh, will incorporate them into my page so first of all I'm going to put some uh, glue behind uh, this image and I'm going to use a glue stick with just a flimsy magazine page it doesn't need any uh, hard uh, or stronger uh, glue than this so that's what I'm using Some of it is sticking outside of my of the edges and I'm gonna trim it later. Right now I'm more concerned of placing this and making sure it sticks. Okay, so I still got a little bit of paint left and I'm going to take a smaller brush let's see here we go and now I'm going to do this and that's how I'm going to make it Uh, go with the with my page and I'm not concerned that every detail of this uh, peacock will be shown I do, I wanted to blend with my page as I said I don't want it to stick out and I don't care much for this so I'm covering it also this bunny nice bunny but not here <laughs> so I'm just going over it and again as you can see I'm alternating with, between uh, the colors the same exactly as I have done on the rest of the page maybe I should have cut this also but I'll manage I'll just go in so now the feathers are more distinct and let's go here a little bit now I really don't care <laughs> if every detail or every leaf is shown I, I'm more concerned with this parrot so also I've got a little iguana here that I don't really care <laughs> about I'm going to leave it be but yeah so I think this one is blended nicely yeah with the rest of the page and now I want to stencil and I'm going to use this stencil and I don't care for this part so I'm going to mask it with a masking tape So it won't run to other places that I don't want.
Okay, so let's see. I'm gonna start here and a little bit off page and I want to do it with white gesso. So I'm going to put a little bit here on this lid and I've got this makeup sponge. This is the one that I just uh, used to gesso the double spread before I started working. So I just left it here and let's see. I'm trying to take as little as I can of the gesso. I don't want it to run under my stencil and I already feel like it did here, but never mind, I'll continue. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's what I wanted. Okay, moving on. Another one, and I'm putting. I don't know if it's in frame, but so I'm trying to take as little as I can on this uh, makeup sponge. So I'm just dabbing it on my table. Well, it seems that it's working. I'm dabbing the excess on the table and I'm left with this and it works nicely. Oh yeah! I really, really like it. So, I want another one here, but I don't want it to be on my... Uh, parrot so let's see if I can cover it let's put it like this and Let's see. Yeah, I can work with it like this. So again, dabbing a little on the table and trying to take as little as I can. So, it didn't uh, work so well because it's like missing a piece here. So I'm going to do something like that and try to match the stencil. Now let's see. Yeah that's definitely better so now i feel like i need more some other circular element to add to my paper i want this whole background to look almost like lace because that's uh, how i feel about this mandalas that i have stenciled so i'm going to go and look for another stencil that i can use here and uh, if i can find something uh, smaller it will be even better and we'll see i'll come back i'm back and i found this stencil that i'm going to 
try and add to my page and let's see I really like the background I have it has a lot of movement but I think that this kind of uh, stenciling is pushing in, uh, back all the details and just making the the background more, more interesting at least to me not good let's see if I can fix it I'll let it uh, dry and we'll see not that it really matters but nonetheless and a little bit here I think yeah now and I want some and some circles and I've got this stencil let's see I don't want the, uh, the larger ones so again I'm going to mask part let's see if I can do something I'm trying to, what I'm trying to do is I will e try and use only the smaller ones and I don't want this big one to be in the way yeah that's what I was aiming for trying to add the circles and in the remaining space you can probably hear my kids in the back it's already the weekend here so yeah So this is going to take some time to go and make dots all over the place. I'm going to come back when I'm finished. I'm back. So completed. <laughs> now I want to uh, make uh, this parrot a little bit more uh, distinctive on my page and I want to darken the edges. So I'm going to take this ink pad by Momento Tuxedo Black. I'm going to use this kind of sponge. It's supposed to be for uh, eyeshadow, I think. And I'm using it when I need something to go into narrow spaces. So I'm going around uh, my parrot like this and also darkening here are the edges like so it's like a uh, adding some shadow to the image and I think it will help it a little bit 
to stand out from the rest of the page. It's not like I'm um, painting it with black. You can still see the colors underneath. It's like making uh, some kind of wash on top. I believe that if I took um, a black acrylic paint and diluted it, I could also do the same thing, but I didn't want to risk uh, using something wet and runny on top of uh, my page. So I'm going around here, darkening the edges just to frame everything. And I like to get more uh, inside on the edges. And when I have less uh, ink on my uh, sponge, I'm going uh, inside more, so I will have soft edges and not harsh lines. So now I hardly have anything on my sponge. Now I will go inside. And that's how I avoid harsh lines. It's fading into the background. And I'm going underneath this uh, branch that I have part of the shadowing it doesn't really matter it's up to you what you want to darken if you want to make something pop more Like, I don't like how a uh, stark white is here, so I'm using what's left on my sponge just to push it a little back. Yeah, basically, that's what I was aiming for. Yeah, more dark edges. Yeah. So now I want some saying and I need it to, uh, so it, you can see it on my page, I need it to put it on some background and that's the saying I wanted to stamp you only live once but if you do it right once is enough. So if I will stamp it directly here on my page it will just get lost in all these details. So I've stamped it on this tissue paper now. This tissue paper, the pattern, I don't know if you can see it, is on this side. And it's a little bit uh, uh, glossy or uh, a little bit more uh, smooth here. So I decided to stamp it on this side. And I'm not really concerned about uh, the pattern. If it will show, it will show. And I was looking for any kind of purple a uh, paper to make my uh, saying on top of it and that's the what I have and this is just a um, printer paper so I'm going to put some a uh, glue stick here very carefully I don't want to tear the tissue paper although it looks like it's going to tear any minute I could have used uh, any kind of other wet glue I just thought I can manage with this so I'm putting it like this and I again I don't want to tear it so I'm putting some uh, plastic just to smooth it 
not uh, I'm not care I don't care about wrinkles uh, I just wanted to to make sure that it's adhered to my page and I'm thinking that I want to a third edges I don't want it straight so I'm going to I think I need to let it dry a little before I'm attempting it uh, so it won't separate the two uh, pieces and let's see maybe I can give it a little blast from the heat tool somehow I thought the tissue paper will be a little bit more translucent but it didn't but it's at least it gives me a base so the tissue paper won't disappear again on the background I have. It still feels like it's a little bit wet on the inside but that's fine. So basically this is what I want here, but I still want to add something to it, so I'm going to, uh, to darken the edges, and I'm going to use this uh, Wilted Violet Distress Ink by Tim Holtz, and some sponge again, and let's see, I'm thinking, let's put it on top here I'm starting to see that when I'm using this kind of uh, sponges, they are still makeup sponges, but because of their shape, all this, they are, I, they are giving me a, a softer uh, look than the regular makeup sponge. So I'm starting to use more and more this kind of sponge. Just a little bit more here. And let's see how it looks. Yeah, that's definitely it. So again, <laughs> a little bit of glue. And basically, I think this is my page. That's it. No, I want it here. Yeah, although it covers a little bit of the mandalas, I still think, yeah. And again, pressing it <laughs> like so, so I, we won't have any accidents. And this is it, that's my page. I am really liking it. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm, I hope you uh, will try to incorporate a magazine image uh, like this. Thank you for watching and thank you for leaving me comments below. Bye for now.